What's the rationale, Chris, for, for, for the triplet? Yeah, and, and, and what, do we have any data on this so far from the studies that have been completed? So what you're alluding to, and I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to discuss this. So when we wrote, uh, and put things in context again, so when we wrote the Enzimet study, the ANZAP team and the global collaboration between UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts at Dana-Farber, we actually wrote um, charted uh, sorry, had the, uh, wrote Enzimet in 2013 before we had the results of the addition of docetaxel a la charted. The, we then rapidly amended it and we said our standard of care for anyone is either hormones plus docetaxel or hormone testosterone suppression alone, depending on who you are and your physician patient decision. So we didn't want to prevent that. And it was going to rapidly become the question, should we be triplet versus doublet? So we actually did a stratification and it turns out we had about 50% of the 1100 patients so a re reasonable, robust data set. And a number of issues came up yesterday in the poster discussion, and I get to address that again here, I think, which is important. So people say, um, well, what we saw was that there was an increase in clinical, time to clinical progression, which was pronounced. But with three years of follow-up, we actually, at the interim analysis, we don't see an OS benefit yet. It doesn't seem like we've impacted that really triple but plus bad patients that we, uh, Chuck is going after with his study. But we'd need to see long-term follow-up data to see if we see an OS benefit. But at this stage, what we do see is um, there is an increased toxicity with the triplet versus doing it sequentially. And most notably, it's an increase in fatigue and neuropathy. So somehow the potent AR inhibition is making the chemotoxicity worse. And we know this in CNS penetration and something's going on there that we have able to find out in the weeds when we looked at the analysis, the toxicity profile. We just presented the quality of life data, and we actually see the enzalutamide monotherapy, with the enzalutamide with the testosterone without docetaxel, has the same impact on deterioration-free survival, pretty similar to some slight effects early, but you delay the clinical progression and the cancer symptoms when you do the composite endpoint of deterioration-free survival. And it looks very similar to what you see with apalutamide. Our study is somewhat, um, when you look at it overall, we seem to have more toxicity because of the docetaxel component, and we see the fatigue in the quality of life domain on the deterioration free survival is overlapping between the two. So when you look at the data sets between apalutamide and enzalutamide, that has to be taken into account, number one. Number two, some people say that there's no improvement in overall survival because there's a drug interaction between docetaxel and enzalutamide. I'm gonna address that here because it's come up a number of times. Point one, yes, Mike Morris and his team and a number and two studies were combined, and they show an 10% increase in clearance of docetaxel by enzalutamide, and that's deemed clinically insignificant given the wide inter individual variability. Then we go and look at the data set, and we see no decreased neutropenic fever, which would suggest if we did, you had decreased exposure to docetaxel. We in fact see increased toxicity. We do see a treatment benefit with the triplet, with a major improvement in clinical progression-free survival. But right now, what I suspect is if we don't see an increase overall survival, it's because doublet followed by ENZA is as good as the triplet all along. If, however, we see, do see a survival benefit at five or six years, something happened here to augment the responsiveness to the second line therapies. But it could be, if it, I'm agnostic, if we don't see a survival benefit, it's just that after you've progressed on DOSI and ENZA, radium and cabazitaxel don't seem to have that much effect to be determined, agnostic, I don't know the answer. Yeah. But at this stage, 2019, I cannot advocate the triplet. And, and, it, and it really gets to what are those secondary exposures we just don't know yet. But to Chuck's point, if, if this were changing the survival of these patients destined to die in the first couple of years, we, we might we have seen some, yeah, something I there, so. and, and, and I we, so. we haven't. So I, I think it leaves open the door that there, there may need to be other targets. So, other so you can imagine a scenario you know, where we can push out the PFS and the OS of the patients who are already benefiting from enzalutamide or docetaxel in this setting. That's good work to do, right? Yes. We should do yes. that. Yep. Um, uh, and, and yet, but what's, what's happening is there is sort of a biological fork in the road. And some people go down this fork of non-hormone sensitivity, and they're the 22% who are dead within two years after starting ADT plus 
sabiraterone or docetaxel, and 33% who are dead within three years. There's some biological switch, and that's what we hope to do is interrogate that. I look forward to the results from charted to see where, what, what sort of molecular events are occurring and how we might be able to integrate that into the additional of uh, what we'll just call a more aggressive chemotherapeutic approach.